Uh, you had to uh, take care of your body more. What? No, I noticed that uh, when I was 36, when I fought John Reese, going to the fight, I was having a lot of complications with the knees because of the weight gain, and I was having a lot of problems with the lower back. But they couldn't put it out of me because I was keeping the head, I was kind of smart. So I've been ex ex experiencing technical difficulties with the body since I was about, probably about 34, really. But um, at 36, when I fought John, and I gained that weight, it really was noticeable because the weight made it hard on my back and hard on my knees. Yeah. So that's when I started noticing that. But now you gotta tone it down a little because things are not going the same, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and from there, you know, it's been, it's been a battle back and forth. But like I tell people, it's like, to see me fight when I'm dominant, it's one thing. To see me fight with all these air illnesses, things bother you, yeah. that's a whole nother thing. Now, how many fighters that call themselves top-notch fighters can go in the ring under 60% physically, but mentally still overcome? Not many. So when people say, who the best ever? I don't argue because I went from a spot where, to where I was 25 pounds of muscle loss, bad back and bad knees. Yeah. Still beat one of the best light heavyweights around for a world title after I won the heavyweight title. So don't tell me what I can do when the chips are all down because I'm pound for pound the best at this. I know what I can do when the chips are all down. When it's time to call on me, like they said, an old fight, and you got to call on him because if you're down now, you got to call on him like, like Dundee had to do Leonard in the Hearns fight. You can call him because I'm coming. You understand know me? That's what we don't know about a lot of these so called pound pound guys now. We don't know that if we called them in a yeah. time of need, in a time of desperation, will they come through? I got it. That's when you know what you really got. You understand where I'm coming from? Because if you don't know you got that, you don't want that. I'm gonna tell you a perfect example. I don't like to use the animal so much because people are so much against the animal and all this stuff, but it's like there are lessons to be learned. And I learned the lessons even back in the day from watching the game roosters because once they say they're going, they going, you gotta kill them, stop. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's like one of my favorite animals of all times. <clears throat> he even made the top 50 athletes of the last century was Secretary. <clears throat> he's a racehorse and he's one of the top 50 athletes. Why? Because when he's down, going into that last stretch, and look, like he might not win, and they call on him, guess what happened? He come through. So, you tell me you want that, or you want a horse that you see just stand in front all the time, and that will fight from the back to come to the front. Yeah. The horse that's stand in front all the time, you don't know what's gonna happen if you ever get behind and have to come back, because he ain't proved you that he can do that. You understand me? So there's a lot of these front running horses that we never seen had to come, out, come back when they were down and out, when the chip was all down. We never seen them have to deal with that. Right. You understand me? I hear you. I deal with that on a daily basis, and still come through. That will separate the boys from the men. So they can do all the talk. I'm not arguing, I'm not calling nobody name. I don't really care. But don't tell me that when it's all said and done, I ain't one of the greatest ever. Because when the chip was all down and I had to be called upon, I got up and answered the challenge.